So there are two workflows to use entity framework. The traditional way is to design database tables first and then have entity framework generate the corresponding domain classes. This approach is called database first or DB first. The other way to use entity framework is the opposite direction. So we start with our domain classes and have entity framework generate the database tables for us. So which approach is better? I personally always favor code first to database first. And there are a few reasons for that. First and foremost is that it increases our productivity. We don't have to waste our time with table designers. It's much faster to write code. For example, in the last section, we quickly created a few domain classes like movie and customer. Creating the corresponding tables would take significantly more time because of all the clicks that we have to do when using table designers. Also, when we create the tables using a designer, we need to manually create a change script in order to deploy the database. If you have done this before, you know that creating and managing these migration scripts are tedious and error prone. The second reason I prefer code first is because we get the full versioning of our database and we can migrate it to any version at any point in time. So if you're maintaining an older version of an application, we can migrate the database to an earlier state. In code first, we use migrations for that, which I'm going to cover next. The third reason I prefer code first workflow is that it makes creating an integration test database super simple. We're going to look at integration tests in the second part of this course. And there I will show you that we can create an integration test database with only three lines of code. If you have ever written integration tests for a database built using DB first workflow, you know that this often requires far more than three lines of code. Now, there are a few misconceptions about code first. One is that it's only useful with greenfield or new projects. Some people claim that if you have an application with an existing database, code first doesn't work. And this is a true myth. I have successfully used code first workflow on legacy databases that were built with poor practices. The benefit of using code first with existing databases is that you get the full versioning of your database from the moment you switch to code first. Plus, you won't waste time creating tables and migration scripts anymore. You just build your domain classes, which is much faster. Another misconception about code first is that it doesn't give you full control over the database. Again, this is a complete myth. And I've explained this in detail in my entity framework course that you can find on Udemy. In my opinion, all these arguments against the code first workflow comes from people who don't have in-depth understanding of code first. So if you're working with people who are used to a certain way of doing things, you should first educate them about the benefits of modern approaches. And in my experience, sometimes this is difficult because humans by default resist to changes. So here's my advice to you. If you want to be a successful developer, especially a web developer, you need to be willing to learn new things pretty fast. You need to let go of the old way of doing things and always keep yourself up to date with the latest practices. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on a lot of opportunities. So in this course, I'm going to use the code first workflow to build our database. Again, if you want to learn about DB first or code first in detail, it's best to take my entity framework course on Udemy. Because in this course, our focus is purely on ASP.NET MVC. And I don't want to spend too much time explaining things that I've already covered in another course with six hours of content. Next, we're going to look at code first migrations.